So last time we kind of ended the class and uh, I had derived the, or we, we kind of did this very systematic procedure for arriving at shape functions and we used as an example the quadratic shape functions. And I talked about this so-called Kronecker delta property and I just wanted to kind of show that in, in, uh, in a picture. So these are plots. So the shape functions, as you can see here, they're all functions of x, of course. So I plug in L equal to 1, so you know, it just goes from 0 to 1 along the x-axis. And then I plot those three shape functions. So this is for a quadratic interpolated polynomial. So there, there's a node at x equals 0, a node at 1 half, and a node at 1. And you can see that the, the Kronecker delta property means that for the first shape function, when it's evaluated at node 0, it's 1, and it's 0 at the other 2. Right? So this, another way, you know, a less mathematical sounding way uh, of talking about the Kronecker delta property is that it interpolates the data exactly. So the interpolating functions actually pass through the nodes. And there are other interpolation schemes that you can derive that do not have that property. All right. So same goes, you know, for the second shape function. It's at x equals 0, it's 0. At x equal 1 half, it's 1. And at x equal 1, or L, it's 0. And then the, the third is 0, 0, 1. Right. So that's the Kronecker delta property. So, you know, what you would get, you know, the shape functions, basically, that and a linear combination of the unknown displacements give you the displacement field, right? Well, the displacement field at zero is just simply, you know, the contribution from N1 is one, and the contribution from the others is zero, right? So, you know, it's only, it's only when you're somewhere in between the nodes that, you know, all three shape functions will be active, if you will, you know, have a contribution to the displacement field. Okay.